Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today, the church recognizes Marcella of Rome, who is known primarily for her role in the founding of monasticism. After the death of her husband, she began a life of abstinence, and many other women in Rome at that time followed suit. Um, growing up, Marcella was influenced by her pious mother, Albina, an educated woman of wealth and benevolence. Marcella's wealth and beauty placed her at the center of fashionable Roman society. She married young to a wealthy aristocrat, but he died a mere seven months later. Um, and at that point, Marcella decided to devote the rest of her life to charity, prayer, and mortification of the flesh, and was convinced that God was directing her to a life of poverty and service. She left behind her fashionable dresses for a coarse brown garment and abandoned her usual extravagant hairstyling and makeup. Along with other women, she formed a community known as the Brown Dress Society, spending their time praying, singing, reading the Bible, and serving the needy. Her palatial home became a refuge for weary pilgrims and for the poor. Summoned by Pope Damasus I, Jerome arrived in Rome in 382. Uh, it was an exhilarating time for Marcella, a woman of letters who had immersed herself in both Greek and Hebrew to be entertaining one of the great minds of the age. Jerome spent the next three years in what he called her domestic church, translating the Bible into Latin. She learned under his teaching, even as she critiqued his translation. He spoke and wrote of her Christian devotion and scholarship. Indeed, his admiration of Marcella was unbounded, not only for her intellectual acumen, but also for her deference to men who might be threatened by her vast store of knowledge. Most of what we know about Marcella is from the letters of Jerome, um, especially letter 127, written on the occasion of Marcella's death. Let us begin morning prayer two on page 76, quickly moving to page 80. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Now turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 72, found on page 685. We will say it responsively by whole verse. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, for one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. His foes shall bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tashish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. 
All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall be their blood in his sight. Long may he live, and may there be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayer be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever, and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him, and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the word wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offering shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 87, let us say together canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon, dawned upon you. you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day and night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, 
the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your wall salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt where he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Let us say the song of Zechariah, canticle 16, found on page 92. Say together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to John. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Pernium. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now turn to page 96 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern, Govern and Hold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry with good things, grant that we, like your servant Marcella, may hunger and thirst after you above the vain pomp and glory of the world and delight in your word above all manner of riches through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we, we pray for the needs of the church and the world, I invite your own intercessions, petitions, or thanksgivings. We pray for the church, for our Anglican Communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Caledonia and the Anglican Church of Canada, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our Bishop, for the congregations of St. Peter's Rockland and St. Columba Booth Harbor, Booth Bay Harbor, for the wardens and vestries of our congregations, for our parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Darren, Jessica, Louine, Myrick, Sophia, presiding Bishop Michael, and B. We offer continued prayers for Laura, Lily, Corky, Oliver, Liam, Nancy, Andrew, Faith, Will, Jackson, Barry, Susan, Michaela, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, 
for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the people of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth for our enemies and those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first expand our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our own nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, for members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Allison, Edward, and Carl. We pray for the departed, for Marshall Nettles, Howard LaRue, Lois Soule, and Orlando Fratti, victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now turn to page 101 and say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts you may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from gener generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We wish you a blessed day and hope to see you again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock on February 1st.